Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the 3D Game Engine tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be extending our update uniform system to work with the four directional forward point and forward spot shaders. So, let's go ahead and let's get to it. However, we have one more very significant hurdle to get over. Not incredibly significant, but significant enough to get over. And that is structs. How are we going to handle things like directional lights or all that stuff? And at least for now, I propose a fairly, I think, a fairly simple solution to it. And that's just the shader handles it. The shader handles it. So, for example, I'm going to sell a else if uniform type dot equals directional light. And now you might be thinking, wait a minute, Benny, but you're not adding anything of type directional light because in your add all, no, add uniform function, you're adding everything down here where it's the individual type of float or whatnot. And you're right. And I've realized now that I don't want to do that. I actually want to add them to the list right here. So this way, it will include struct types. Because, well, I want structs to be handled a little bit differently from the rest of our code. So, yeah. This way, this will preserve the struct name and struct type. So if it is a struct and it's going through here in our update uniforms function, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to hard code it for the time being at least the lighting types. I'm also going to implement a more general system in a moment to handle, you know, more complex things than that. But for now, it's really going to be, you know, hard-coded type of thing. So, going to have base lights and directional lights in here. And just like that. So, there now the update functions are in the shader. Haven't broken forward directional just yet. But I need to actually set it. So, wherever it is, it's somewhere in here. Good lord, this class is getting big. Yeah, here it is. So where I've detected the type is a directional light, I'm going to set a uniform directional light. And again, I'm only going to be hard-coding the lights. Everything else after this, I'm... Well, I'm not. I'm going to set uniform directional light, and it's going to... Well, actually... Hmm. You know what, here, I'm going to need this just about everywhere, so yeah, rather than doing it all over the place, I'm just gonna... Yeah, I'm gonna make the unprefixed un uniform name, just like that. Set directional light, which I honestly think just... Oh, oh it takes in the starting name. Start with the unprefixed uniform name. Wait, no, start with the uniform name. And then pass in the directional light, which is going to be rendering engine dot get it's gonna need to get a light and again I'm gonna hard code it's gonna be this cast to a directional light and there so with that that should handle at least directional lights and I'm gonna check that in a moment but we have one more much smaller but another thing to handle that's the iPos and the way I'm gonna handle this is I'm just gonna have a fourth type, a fourth unofficial type, which will be C underscore, and that'll be for camera stuff. So C will mean camera. And yeah, where is here? There we go. Hate it when it here. Let's, let's close some stuff because I really don't like it when they make two layers of tabs like that. This, I don't know. I just don't like that that much. But anyways, so we never, never check. Do below here. And that's if uniform name dot starts with, and in this case it's going to be C, because it starts with C. That's going to be camera. And well, I'm going to do this kind of like transform. If uniform name dot is C underscore ipos, then well, then I can set the uniform to whatever the uniform name is, which will be CIPOS in that case. And 
it's also going to be set or it's going to be set to what I have in forward directional, which is rendering engine. I get camera. I get transform position and all that nonsense. Yeah, that. And otherwise, I'm going to throw an illegal argument exception to is not a valid component of camera. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and do that sort of here as well. Except this time it's going to be with type. So it's not, yeah, it's not a valid, sure, how about is not a supported type in rendering engine. Sure. That sounds good to me. And I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom of here, except in this case it's going to be in material. And, well, great. So, with that, I think I have all the things in place to really just get rid of all this and just say super dot update uniforms with transform material and rendering engine, all that stuff. So, let's modify directional light a bit. And let's go ahead and add our new... I don't know what you want to call it. Oh, here we are, our new system. So, gonna have, let's see, T underscore... Actually, that's a good point. I should probably call it model, because that's... Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna call that model, actually. So, let's change that while I'm at it. S say T model. Unfortunately, that makes it really easy to change, because... Well, fortunately, it is really easy to change in our system, so... Oh. Well, I never used it anywhere, so it doesn't matter, but... <laughs> you know. Okay, great. TMVP. You know. And, yeah. I'm not going to show you this change for all the shaders. just want to show you right now, just to see... Just so you see how everything looks with our... Well... With our, uh... With our new... What's it called? <laughs> yeah, for our new system. And there. Now, lighting.glh I'm going to need to change in a few other places, because that's not just going to be C underscore... Well, because I need to rename C IPOS everywhere I'm using it. And Alright, but everywhere I use it is in this file, so never mind. This isn't going to be that hard. For a second there, I thought I was going to have to, like, you know, go into specular stuff and all that and just do something really nasty that I didn't really want to, but hey, this makes things a lot easier. So the only th other thing I think depends on iPods is Calc Spotlight. I, at least I thought it did, but I guess not. So great, let's build and let's see if this runs. And yeah, yeah thought there might be a little bit of an issue there. So, I'm gonna go... Oh! Well, that's just a misnaming thing. So, one moment, I just need to rename the stuff to, you know, where I'm actually using model and whatnot. And rename where I'm actually using the stuff. So there. Yeah, don't forget renaming where you use the things. That's kind of an important part of the process. And now I should be able to build and run. And no, doesn't quite work out. So, one moment, I'm going to see what I need to fix, what I didn't do quite right. And it's not an issue with the system at all. It's just that where I'm manually setting them, I need to change it to C underscore IPOS, so in places like forward point and forward spot. So, whoop, no, there. You know, because they're not on the new system just yet, but... Yeah, you know, they still need to use proper uniform names, and it's called C under score IPOS now. And, hey, what is this? I believe that's a directional light that's being updated with absolutely no code uh, in of itself, using fully generic shader code. I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty awesome. So, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and do the same sort of thing for spot and point light. And then I'll talk about 
the more generic system I'm going to do for, well, for, ah, for other types of structs and shaders. So I'm going to copy set uniform point light. No need for this anymore. Move it in here. And I'm going to do this part on screen, just so that you see I am actually just copying the unique functions. This also helps with code reuse now, so it's never a cool thing. And there. So cool, we got all our lighting uniform update stuff inside the actual shader class. Big step, in my opinion. So, yeah. And... How much? Good lord, how many lines of code does this thing have? Almost 400. That's great. <laughs> Almost 400 lines of code in our share class now. <sighs> wow. Well, so now I all, sh all I should have to do is change the point light to set uniform point light, and the spotlight thing to set uniform spotlight. And just need to cast it to a... what's it called? To a point light and a spotlight, respectively rather than a direction light. And that should be everything, I think. I could be wrong. I might have missed something. But I really think this will just work, as is. So, in fact, I'll just copy the line straight out of forward directional for forward point and forward spot. <laughs> and let's build, and let's run, and let's see if I've screwed anything up. And I did, okay. Ah! I haven't supported matrices. Because... Hmm. Actually, that... Huh, I wonder why that is happening. One moment. And I just forgot to prefix my point light stuff and spotlight stuff. So, in point light forward point.fs, forward point.vs, forward spot.fs, forward spot.vs, all that stuff. Yeah. Just went ahead and, well, went added prefixes. And also, in forward ambient and forward directional, you may have noticed I've gotten rid of the prefix on diffuse. I did the same thing in all the other things as well. So, the sampler 2D, the diffuse, no longer has a prefix. And you might be wondering, well, why is that? And that's because if the uniform type is sampler 2D, then it's going to need the sort of type lookup and bind and set uniform regardless of where it's supposed to come from. That's just an inherent part of the sampler 2D type. So, I am going to make that sort of an independent check. If it is a sampler 2D, then it's going to do this check no matter what. It's going to, well, it's going to look with the uniform name and bind an update, no matter what. Otherwise, and make sure you get rid of the ex extraneous else here, otherwise it's going to start looking at prefixes and seeing where it should go, and all that stuff. So yeah, and now that all that's out of the way, I should be able to build and run with perfectly working point, spot, directional lights, everything, yes, with the exact same uniform update function. Folks, we've done it. We have a generic way, almost, I'll talk about that in a moment, but an almost completely generic way of updating uniforms. And I do say almost because we still haven't handled the case of, well, what if it is a struct? You know, what do we do? And, well, there's sort of two things we can do here. One is just, say, throw an exception, can't possibly work out. The other is to give whoever's programming the rendering engine a chance to handle it. I'm going to handle lights by default, but if the programmer wants to have their own types of structs and whatnot, then I can let the rendering engine handle it. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to make the set uniform stuff public 
all these functions are public, see? So if I create a new function in render, say public void update uniform struct, right? And this is going to take in some sure I can take in the transform transform. I can take in the material material just like before. Yeah, sure. I'm also going to take in the shader that it should be that's supposedly needs this uniform struct update. And I'm also going to take in a string for the uniform name and a string for the uniform type. It's going to be one really long method, but it's here. And this is where I just give the programmer a chance to handle some struct type that comes up that isn't handled by default in our shader class. So, you know, it's just a nice way of doing that. And yeah, and I'm going to do that for a rendering engine. So, otherwise, I'm not going to throw that. I'm going to move that into here. But, yeah, otherwise, I'm going to say update way. I'm going to take go to the rendering engine and update the uniform struct with transform with material with this you know the shader and the name and the type and whatnot and uniform name and uniform type there there so that's nice the programmer does have a chance to be able to manually handle structs if it really if they really need to i think that's kind of nice so yeah and of course the way they do that is by either modifying the rendering engine class and modifying this method manually, or by extending the rendering engine class and writing their own rendering engine class, which overrides this function, has their own implementation in there. So yeah. And honestly, with that, I think we've just about done it. There's only one more thing I want to do while I'm doing all this stuff. Because, you know... It really is a shame that we have to have all these different classes which don't even do anything different at this point. They're just there for the purpose of being singletons. Let's fix that. Let's get rid of all our shader classes and make everything managed by the shader class. But that's going to have to wait till next time. So, thank you. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned, and I'll see you in the next video, where we will be getting rid of all our forward ambient, or, yeah, forward ambient, forward shader, or, you know what I mean, all our shader children classes, and we will be managing everything with the shader class. So thank you, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and see you then.